one um, benefit, I will say, studying Luther is obviously that it gives us uh, gives us insight about the role of religion freedom in the rise of modernity. But it also can help us to understand the dialect the dialectic dialectic between freedom and subjection between freedom and bondage between freedom and authority because when because freedom is closely related well, freedom is closely related to subjection <clears throat> and freedom is closely related to authority um, and whenever people and the reason is uh, this dual aspect of freedom as freedom from. So as long as you are talking about freedom from, the question of authority and bondage and subjections can be held sway, I mean, <laughs> can be held um, at bay. Um, but once you start, uh, when you achieve your freedom from whatever you're trying to free yourself from, you realize that there's another freedom too. And this freedom too can't be the same thing as freedom from because now you are going to do something positive and that would uh, involve establishing a new authority and if looked from the freedom uh, from the perspective of freedom from it will it can look like bondage and subjection etc so in this sense freedom and subjections are not two different things um, they are <clears throat> um, the two sides of uh, the same coin, so to speak. And Luther was aware of that. Um, so, for example, this tract which he sent to, wrote and sent to Leo X, uh, just before he excommunicated him, called the freedom of a Christian, I think. Freedom of a Christian. Uh, 
um, freedom of Christian. And in this tract, uh, he says somewhere, and I'm using a paraphrase here from Hendrix. Um, Christians, Christians as people Christians are people whose faith made them made them the freest lords of all. So the Christian people are the freest people of all. But on the other hand, so all subject to no one. But whose um, Love made them dutiful servants of all. Subject to no one. Oh, sorry, subject to everyone. Subject to everyone. So no one and everyone. Obviously, this has its specific uh, Christian context and biblical context, but at least on the face of it, um, In this um, paragraph, <clears throat> see that on the other hand, these same people they are free, subject to no one, and probably because of this freedom, they are also due to on the other hand, due to dutiful, dutiful um, servants of all, and subject to everyone um, and I think that uh, here the freedom is freedom from and then this is freedom to so this dialect this uh, relationship between freedom to and freedom from is uh, very clear here and in in fact once um, Luther was successful there were <clears throat> various internal division among his followers And there were people who disagreed with him on various point, various points on once they had attained their freedom from what positive doctrine or what positive uh, path they were going to uh, take. Um, so whenever you have freedom to, you propose something there would be a contention. So people who were united in freedom from Pope were ne not necessarily united in what they wanted to achieve. So this 
dialect uh, and um, in fact luther reminded his uh, erstwhile followers and now his opponents um, that they owed him thanks um, for freeing them from the Pope. And should, should let him to be the authority. Obviously, he didn't say it in so many words, but that's what we wanted to be the authority who will ultimately decide what path to take once they were free from the hegemony of a uh, Roman Pope. So, this dialect between negative freedom and positive freedom is clear in his writing as well as what happened after he succeeded. And I think um, no one um, captured this uh, this dialect better than Marx in one of his early writings when he says um, that um, I'll read that about uh, commenting on Luther's work um, he said um, even from the historical point uh, standpoint, theoretical emancipation has a specific practical importance for Germany. In fact, Germany's revolutionary past is theoretical. It is the Reformation. So, Reformation was uh, the first German revolution. Um, in that in that period, the revolution originated in the in the brain of a monk today in the brain of the philosopher, so by monkey mean Luther and um, he was the monk who actually um, is actually um, freed <laughs> people from you know the monkhood and I think he considered one of his uh, that that was part of his mission, you know. And he he actually wrote his father about about that. Uh, um, and we'll talk about that some other time. Anyway, so even from the historical point of view, and and by philosophy, obviously, I mean Hegel. Even from the historical standpoint, theoretical emancipation has a specific practical importance for Germany. In fact, Germany's revolutionary past uh, is theoretical. It is the Reformation. In that period, the revolution originated in the brain of a monk, today in the brain of the philosopher. But here's the um, quotation which I wanted to draw your attention to where he sort of captures that dialect. But I, I don't think you understand that very well. It is uh, from from our point of view. Um, but he does capture it. Luther, without question, overcame servitude, so that's a negative freedom, through devotion. But only by substituting serv servitude through conviction. So that's positive freedom once he got that. He shattered the faith in authority, that's the authority of uh, the Pope and the authority of the Roman Church, by restoring the authority of the 
authority of faith, like his own church. And obviously, it's, just, uh, it's not just faith, but authority of civil, I mean, reformation, at the Lutheran reformation was a boon for regional um, forces, prince, you know, it, it gave the civilian authorities huge power and increased their power anyway. So he transformed the priests into uh, the priests into laymen, because he said that every Christian has a right to interpret. And obviously, since the main thing was faith, not the scripture, and the faith was personal, um, which people experienced through their connection with the Holy Spirit, then every layman was free. So, so he transformed the priests into laymen. So playing field was level because but by turning a layman into priest so once once he got rid of the priesthood of uh, Roman Catholic Church he was um, forced to you know develop his own priesthood even though you know he had provided the argument for you know getting rid of priesthood so he liberated man from external rel religiosity by making the re making religiosity the innermost essence of a man through faith because um, roman catholic church you know good work and all that which he said you know were no, no longer the essentials for salvation but only the faith and the faith so he liberated the body from its chain that is the chain of the church, because he fettered the heart with chains through faith, so internalizing the whole thing. Um, that's the dialect, uh, and obviously Marx is saying that this is, this was the work which was reversed. But what Marx doesn't say here is that it's not just Luther. Any um, movement based on freedom is going to have to um, address this question of negative freedom once you have negative freedom then positive freedom in a sense uh, replicate or create new authority new bondages etc so that's a that's a necessity in a sense which you know, you know, gives us a glimpse into the limitation of freedom. So that that's why you know the same thing happens with the with with you know revolutions which were um, created or proclaimed in not in, in the name of Marx or socialism. The same thing happens. You. You free your people from the, but you, you know, you create new Zardom, uh, red czars. <laughs> um, but that's not there. I mean, obviously, it's uh, nature can change. But um, freedom is illusion to the extent that if we think that we are going to perpetually live in negative freedom, uh, if we really want freedom, then I think that's why I think uh, Foucault is right that he was <laughs> at least in his middle period he said freedom entailed permanent hyperactivism <laughs> because once you sit and you are bound to you know feel chained again so anyway, this is the interesting dialect.